<laughs> All right, welcome back. Yes, uh, we're already having a good time here uh, in the studio. I'm joined here by two amazing uh, artists, father and son duo. Um, Imadi? Madi. Madi or Imadi? Rimadi. Madi. Ri. Rimadi. Why is there an R there now? Because it's Omori Madi. The child. Oh, Rimadi. Rimadi. Yeah. Yeah. Omori Madi. Okay, okay. Yeah. and Femi. Yeah. And Nicola Pokuti. So I, I tweeted this just now and you yes. were like, no, you're not your royalty. I said, Nicola Pokuti royalty are going to be joining me. Why do you have a problem with the word royalty? Because it sounds too... Too much hailing. Too much snobbish. How? Too... I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> when I saw it, I thought, ah. Because <laughs> I, I wondered why you had a problem with the word royalty. I, I, I like to be very simple and um, straightforward. Mm. So all those hailing... Yeah, titles. My mother used to, it used to get on her nerves, and I think I'm taking a lot after her in that respect. Yeah. So, but I mean, with a surname like that, you can't run away from hey, it. Of course, we are in the limelight where everybody's talking, but when people start to hail and hail, I like to have um, frank conversations with people, not people who are respecting or people. Yeah. I like to be friendly, I like to be down to earth, basically. Yeah. So. Uh, so, but you know when you are walking, and people are saying King, Ah King, Emperor, Ah Cha. Which is there is this guy that used to call me King in my house, King, my granny, my mother's mother, maternal grandmother, yeah. and she hated the guy so much for calling me King. Say, will he stop that rubbish of this? Hour? So one day he heard her saying it. So he now came, Emperor, Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> But you told me fella stopped liking being hailed. No, fella too didn't like yeah. because they used to hail him a lot. And after a while, it just, you know, it just gets on your, yeah. it's like too much after a while. You, mm. are, you are called, maybe your name is Femi. Then they start putting things between your name. Just want to Do you be, also hate that? My own is just compliments in general. I've never been good at receiving compliments. Like it's awkward for you. Like if after a good solo and someone says, ah, that was outstanding, and I'm just thinking, oh, I made like 17 mistakes in my head. <laughs> That's all you can remember. Yeah. So am I right to say, so how does, is this, does the name, is it a burden to an extent for you? Not for me. Not really. I mean, we I think basically we just want to be simple and have mm. normal life. And But when people are, you can't do anything without being criticized or praised, when you are just going about your daily business, basically. Everything yeah. you do, you do as a kuti. So yeah. then, then the comparison starts. Okay, like at the beginning of my career, I was always comparing me to my father. And I couldn't understand, why are you comparing me to the man? I, I, this is my father, I love him. I didn't say competition and everybody was competition. Yes, is there, there is fight, there must be war. And yeah, he's better than you can ever. And it was like, why are you thinking like this? This is my father. I love him. I respect him. I adore him. I didn't see competition. But fortunately or unfortunately, this is the side of, this is the profession I've decided to take. And even if I became a doctor, they would still criticize it. So there was nothing I was going to do that would be perfect in the eyes of a lot of people. So, and I did not understand why their lives had to be like that. And then I... I said to, why are you making your problem my problem? If you are seeing competition and I don't want to see competition, why are you making it my problem? Why are you coming into my lane to disturb my life? Hey, make it your problem. But it's almost inevitable, though. If you're if you're a musician, you told the line your father told. Your father was such a legend. For That's why it's called music. Yes. Do you hear? It's it's not like I tweeted the other day. Somebody was asking me if young people come and say they're in competition with you. I said it's not. Music is not sports. Yeah. We are not running relay. It's That's why it's called. Do you hear the name? It's music. Do you see, see how sweet the word sounds? It's yeah. not sports. It's not boxing. <laughs> it's you are going to bring this yeah, to yeah. So Why did they put the table Please by my heart? You, you see the slap I gave you before? You, you see my eyes. <laughs> there was a slap before the show started. Do you, do you find... Do I get slaps off of here? Hey, that's why it's growing the afro. So I can't yeah, tell you. Can't, can't. Do, do you feel the same way? About, you know what he's talked about, him and Fela, and all the pressure that came with that. Did I, you feel that? Or are you feeling that already? I, my father is not the same kind of father that Fela was. So from a very young age, I was very, I had a very liberating childhood. Yeah. In that I could do almost anything I wanted, however long I wanted it. I used to walk out in the middle of the day, just go in Agidimbi somewhere. My dad would be looking for me at like eight years old. And I'd be somewhere in like in the grammar school. Yeah, where you going to? <laughs> I was always doing something. But... Playing so, football. So through all of that, I found myself at a very young age. Okay. So I'm a very content person. Yeah. I've 
I, I think I, that kind of intensity of the burden and the legacy, the pressure from me, I lost it at about 13. Yeah. Very young age. Yeah. And then it's not just that, it's also the entire, the entire, what, all that the Kuti legacy encompasses. I've, yeah. I've found myself within it. Yeah. Well, that's Whatever, thanks there's, to him. There's, there's, that's not really myself. It's yeah. that I was always comfortable. Yeah. yeah. But that comes with a lot of pressure. I mean, when the, the way you even just drew that, the yeah. Kuti legacy is so heavy on yeah. so many levels. Mm. So it's almost like getting tied to that name comes with some level of expectations. Do you feel that? Does it help you get better or does it put pressure on you? In That's a what I'm, not so good way. The life I live is Maria's life. Yeah. And it just so happens that what I do is in tune with the Kuti legacy. I don't think of the name as a kind of heavy responsibility. Yeah. Because if I did, then my values and ethics will be built from a name, not from what I believe. Yeah. And my dad has always taught me about finding my own, you know, to establish my own profound reason for living and yeah. whatever I want to try to achieve. And it just so happens that it's in line with the Kuti, you know, the Kuti traits. Yeah. And so, yeah, <laughs> I live my life. So far, so good. Yeah. You look, you're look, in spite of all the slaps, <laughs> you're, you're looking at him with such admiration, you know. And uh, <laughs> I would have to say that so that he can hear it. Yeah. Uh, you, are, you, you are being partial here. You, you did look at me very well. <laughs> when did you find out this was going to happen with him and music? And how did you feel about it? I, I, I would say my elder sister, Yeni, yeah. found this out three. We were on a tour bus, and my friend brought a... Brought a trumpet on the bus. He picked it up and just did pa, and it was unusual for a child to pick up a trumpet. Trumpet is probably the most difficult instrument to I don't play. think I can blow a trumpet. It's, it's very difficult. It's not like yeah, the sax, you can just put it on your mouth yeah. and get sound. Trumpet is like a technique practically to impossible to produce a sound. And he did, and she was saying, wow, he has showed you what he wants to do, getting me teacher. So as soon as we got to Lagos, I got him a trumpet. And he was what, three? Three. And then he said to study the trumpet, then the piano, he opened the shrine in 2000. He was five then, mm. when he, he was first to perform at the New Africa Shrine. Wow. So he joined my band at, um, he was um, eight, going nine. Then he said to tour with me. Then I said to see that this was affecting his studies, so I sacked him from the band. <laughs> to face your studies. <laughs> that was the most depressing part of his life. Did you really sack or just say? Uh, I sacked him. Sacked I, sacked him. Sacked him. I gave him a letter. I said, you are here by sack with immediate effect <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you deal with that? Because, I mean, I get a sense that, I mean, his father, but he's also pretty in control. Yeah. Or was, at least to an extent. No, still is. <laughs> <laughs> bullying, man. <laughs> I, I bully you. Yeah, no, we'll get off TV that's now. It, that's <laughs> it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. No, but <laughs> very seriously, very seriously, yeah. is he has complete um, liberty to be himself, yeah. do whatever yeah. I want to do. Yeah. As a father, I can only guide him. I can only let him know. You see, this street, I've made several mistakes here. These are my mistakes. Don't make this. It's pointless. A father should always be a father by guiding you. Say, okay, if you put your hand there, it's going to burn you. If you want to get burnt to feel what pain feels like, yes, go experience because experience is a good teacher. Yeah. So I, I give him all the pros, the cons. I give him so, but then that final decision will be his own. If it burns him, he say, ah, he paid me. I say, how was it? And I will can measure. How that pain was. Mine was ah like eighty percent. Wow, mine was hundred percent. I said, ah, okay, good. Happened. So we have very <laughs> frank, has frank yeah. discussions. And if he doesn't listen, I said, Shabi, I told you. So yeah. you learn. Okay. Was that good. how you were with Fella? Or was that how Fella was with you? Fella wasn't uh, I am more Fella wasn't the conventional father at yes. all. The kind of liberty I had was extreme. Like I was driving a car at twelve. I said to smoke cigarettes at 12, going on 13. I mean, I was completely free. I was going to nightclubs at 16. I would put mustache to be saying I'm over 18. <laughs> I mean, fellas, right? son. I was driving a, these civilian buses at, uh, so 15. I, I was doing incredible things. Police were chasing me around the town. I used to put pillows under my um, car seat to drive. and. It was a heap. I would just drive into Baptist Academy, for instance, which was my secondary school. Everybody said, ah, Spemi has brought a Range Rover to school. And with, I thought that was life. When I see my 12-year-olds, I said, I, I was driving at this age. <laughs> I know, my father must have been crazy. Even, they can't even think they want to even go and learn how to drive at that age. So I'm very strict there. 
but I still give them that liberty to find themselves, yeah. which is, I think, I had that liberty as well to um, look for myself. And because Kalakuta was very chaotic. Fela's life was the police, the arrest. There was so much happening. It was really too much for a child. Yeah. So I try to not let them get too involved, but they have to understand this legacy. They have to understand their grandfather, their father. But they must, children must be able to live their lives and find their own spirit, their soul. They, he can't be Femi. He can't be Fela. He has to be, the only way he will be appreciated at the end of his time in life is if he is Madi and Nikola Kukuti. Like I did, I quickly found myself. Everybody wanted me to, even my father wanted me to take over. It was my refusal that, look, Fela, I cannot be you. But this caused a big fight between us because the African culture is, you must be your father. If you are going to tell that place, you are going to look like him, dress like him. So I was even dressing the same shoes, the same clothes. And then it was, I was just like a puppet. And you know, I was protesting inside, but I could not show it because it was like taboo. You can't fight fella. Yeah. Then when I eventually got the courage, everybody said, ah, this boy is a useless son. I mean, everybody went totally against me, but it was, I think it was the best decision I made yeah. to find myself, make my name, find my own style of music, which I think is, he's already finding because of the way that my life, that chaotic life has been, has enabled me to give my children the best form of tutorship and father, a father can give his child freedom, not freedom of my kind of freedom, freedom with some laws. You can't do this till your age. Look, it's madness to do this. Yeah. Why do you want to smoke? <laughs> it's bad for your health. So giving them that kind of true education. Yeah, it's interesting about the smoking thing as well. I think I was about 13 when I asked you if I could smoke. And you said, oh, just wait till you're 18 and decide for yourself. Then I never did. So he actually did say you could, but yeah, you had to be Yeah, just age. wait. It will be his decision. Yeah, but I will yeah. tell him that you see this smoke, it's going to affect your lungs. You are, look, <laughs> you are going to have health crisis, player, blah, I blah, you're a home player. Play you, you don't need this. Yeah. You don't need alcohol. You don't need all these things. Look, just work hard. If you work hard, you see, many of these um, stop senses, if you are supposed to arrive... <laughs> 10 years. I also don't it, drink, you know. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I believe that anybody who hangs around the shrine, yeah. <laughs> there's it, the stories about the shrine of his beliefs. So clean. You know me, I've been, I've been through <laughs> You've it. done it all for him. I've, no, it's not. <laughs> it's in way, my... It's, 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 I, I, again, I don't have any regrets. Yeah. Because probably if I did go through the conventional way, my music would have been very boring. Maybe I'll be a snob. Maybe I'll be so... Maybe I'll not be who I am today. So I think life has... We have a reason to be alive, to do some certain things. God knows why. Experience and we just have to fight through those battles to find that reason and, For yourself. and make the best of that situation. Yeah. So my street training in Kalakuta brought that kind of music. A track like Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. Everybody thinks it's Fela's track, but it's my track. There are yeah. so many of my songs that you listen, you think it's Fela, but it's my compositions. But this was because I was really living that life. He's... Um, he can read, write, we had um, A's on the computer. I mean, he's doing things I could not dream of at this age because I knew maybe I escaped those, getting away with those things. He will not escape them in his own time. Because yeah. mm. many times I go to America or Europe and you just meet these missions, they're all reading and writing and Standard you just be looking at, so what is my own here? So I knew my problem was now I had to double my practice, I had to double everything. I was walking like a mad man yeah. to just find my sound on the sax, set to teach myself the piano, the trumpet. But now he is, he has that street mentality, but he has education, which I think is very important for a child. Very important. Too. I'm actually very interested in how you are coping with being in a band like this and the culture like or the perception slaps. or the perception of what happens at the shrine. And you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't. How are you? Do you feel any pressure to, to be that way, or to, is this all a myth that we think to be in or to be like what the what people expect of, um, of a shrine musician or a shrine then, artist? If you've ever why? been, why? Wait, wait, wait. Well, that's, that's what I said. What, perception. So that's why? What I no, but to say. because of most of your artists today are all drinking and smoking, and they are not from shrine. They okay, are not even from shrine. Artist culture. Should okay, we, okay, okay better. Ah. <laughs> you feel better. Yeah. Before your slap reach. <laughs> Oh man! No, yes. I will bring gun. I will bring gun like Shewuna. It really, de 
depends on me. It really depends on me. Did you go there? Oh, man. It really depends on, the, on, the, on, the, on what you consider, like, what uh, grouping of artists that you place me in. Yeah. So, like, in, even in the shrine, people don't even know there's a no-smoking area. The smoke yeah. might reach you. But, I mean, there's a place for people that don't want to smoke. Yeah. I know everybody that comes there smokes. I know that for a fact. Most yeah. of, 95% 90 of my musicians don't even smoke. Yeah. Yeah, the I think only one of them, thinking now, only one of my musicians Maximum smoke. Maximum two. Not even uh, yeah. the other kind, the yeah. cigarettes. He smokes cigarettes. He yeah. doesn't smoke. None of them take drugs in my band. What I mean is that the shrine, if you've been there, You'll, you'll notice that there's all kinds of people. Yeah. And you can't, anyone so you that can't has been present. Exactly. Of what even many of our fans don't even smoke. That's so it's I just mean. that so. made that because of Fela, if you go to the shrine, you are most be smoking. <laughs> yeah. That was all there was going in VI. This big club, they were smoking uh, Indian <laughs> marijuana, call it what you want. I stopped my car. There was a police car parked right beside the club. And they were smoking, I stopped. I said, wow. And I called the people. I said, you are smoking that thing. Say, ah, with the smoke calm. I said, ha, you see now. So I told the people, they say, if this was right now, they give shrine a bad name. People are but look at them right here, smoking it. The police is there. Everybody knows they are all smoking here. But if you do it in shrine, they give us a we bad We went to name. a cool hotel. We were clean. Nobody was smoking in our, in our room. I stepped out and the entire hall was just... <laughs> Marrow. Different things. I mean. But, <laughs> but then, they will, because we were there, they will blame us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ah. But then the artist culture, the artist culture yeah. is that. So I said the grouping of artists. So I place myself more as a, um, because I'm an educated musician, I think I have a certain responsibility to present myself in certain ways that can be forward thinking to a generation that is coming yeah. after me. So that's really why I get sort of a lot of my yeah. ideals. Because I do want to teach later in my life. Because oh, I, right. you know, I practice a lot. I learn a lot. So I want to pass on that kind of knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Are you? Are you? Are you an? African Why didn't you ask artist? him if he's going to teach me? Because I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my thing I'm you worried mean. for putting two, two of you in the same space. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So I'm trying me to put Azika to give him. You can imagine that. So get him away. Would you call yourself an Afrobeat artist? Afrobeat artist. Or Afro beats, which no, I know a lot of us agree with. Our own. <laughs> Look, oh, I'm, that's why I said which is he. Yeah, I. First and foremost, I consider myself a musician. Okay. And a musician has to have certain attributes. He has to understand music. He has to have an understanding of music theory. He has to know his scales, his arpeggios, his techniques, his harmony. If, he's, if he plays an instrument, he has to practice well. He has to practice hard. He has to know that music is tedious. And it requires hourly practice every day. You have to know that there are people that are significantly better than you all over the world. And so you have to find your own voice, you know, just practicing to sound like people. And all these things take a lot of time. Yeah. So I spend about seven hours a day practicing about five different instruments. He's trying to do one hour better than me. <laughs> I thought he's, he's an idiot, I'm telling you. <laughs> I spend about five, you know, so about five different instruments. And I know that I'm not at my best. And I know that, and I know what the levels are, you know. So yeah. music, that's how I approach it, music first. On the compositional kind of, because I studied composition at Trinity. Yeah. I still consider myself a musician before an Afrobeat artist. But when I produce my own music, I make it with Afrobeat as the most fundamental musical right. element of everything. But then I have to divert because I have to sound like myself. Okay. We're going to take a break. I just want to do your school fees in always. <laughs> and you should be proud. Take a quick break now. Come back and conclude this conversation. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I'm here with Made and Femi Kuti, who have been having a great family conversation with me here. Everything has been peaceful. <laughs> Don't believe me. <laughs> I want to talk the Grammys very quickly. You've had, I want to believe, four nominations? Five now. Five now. Um, yeah. five, technically five, because um, the song I did with um, Coldplay. Coldplay. Okay, yeah, that's true. So that's the fifth one. So it's been yeah. 2002, 9, 11, 13, I believe, and then this one what are those are what, those things important to you at the beginning it was important because nobody gave me the opportunity to to be successful so but before the grammys don't forget that was cora was very big in yes, nigeria at that true. time and i won the cora then and then the world music i won the world yeah, music 2000. award so these were mighty awards in those days but after i won the world music it was like so it didn't <laughs> I mean, everybody was, but it didn't make the roads in Nigeria better. We still did not have electricity. There was still poverty. Everything was getting worse. So I was 
My life didn't seem, I was still Femikuti, even if people were overhealing. I didn't see the effect in, personally, I didn't see, nothing changed. It even probably was left a kind of sour taste, probably. In your mouth, yeah. I just wanted, I joined music. I wanted to play music just to play music to be a good musician yeah. and as good as I could be. So I think awards are secondary. And then I said to understand that, look, there are so many great musicians that never won awards. So, mm. and there I respect them so much. My father, for instance, never got nominated for any of those mighty awards. I well, mean, still a great. Bob Marley, I could, we could name so many of them. And, um, as this is my line of thinking now. Yes, if they award, they recognize me or anybody. Yes, feel good, drink your champagne, but don't let it get to your head yeah. because. I mean, I, I saw a tweet during the NSAS protest, which I'm sure you guys saw, uh, about how your mom, your grandmother, yes, and your father and you all protested at different levels against the military, against injustice in government, and all of that. And there was a picture of you now mm. <laughs> protesting as well. It's like four generations fighting the exact same cause over decades. Um, it's sort of a, what, another burden that comes with the name, I believe, of being a Kuti, where you sort yeah, of are in the forefront of being yeah. politically conscious and always speaking up for people. Have you started feeling that pressure? And is it something you feel like you have to, you know, sort of carry on? Pressure? No. Def <clears throat> I truly mean it when I say that I don't feel pressure. It's, it just so happens that the things that I care about align with... Because so, when we're living at the shrine, I walked around a lot. And I saw a lot. I met a lot of people. And I knew I had significantly more than so much of the people that I was meeting. Yeah. And then I went to, like, because then we travel, and then we go to different people's houses, middle-class houses, and then I see that they have just as much as I do. And they're, they're arrogant about it as well. They boast about it. It's about who has the newest game, who has this. And then life on the street was just, I let's It was completely more. different. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I cared about it because it hurt me knowing that People were born into conditions that they didn't make for themselves. And there's, there was little to no way for them to escape it. I, hate, I hated the unfairness about it. I didn't consider it like injustice or political mishandling. I just didn't like that it was so unfair. So from a young age, I was writing music that was very political. I didn't play some of them to you, but from like 13, I was really upset about a lot of stuff. And it just so happened that my dad, I was reading like Game of Thrones when I was younger. My dad got upset with me and said, why are you reading these novels? <laughs> Go and read politically conscious and, you know, high, high conscious level books. So I, the first one I read was The Scramble for Africa, Thomas Pakenham. And that talks about, obviously, you know, the scramble, how Nigeria, Africa was dissected, who went where, how they were abusive, how they were exploitative. And then it was how Europe had developed Africa and then Black Man of the Nile. Stolen Legacy. So everything I was reading was so... And then the autobiography of Malcolm X. So everything was provoking me. I was always so upset about just the level of injustice and how obvious it was and how obvious the people experiencing it was for them and how little they could do about it. About it, yeah. So I decided that every song I made would be about it. Every song I made would be about progress. So you didn't need the pressure of the name or I anything. I found it, it myself, was, yeah. yeah. And I think that's, that's very important because a lot of people tend to just be oblivious. And I think it's credit to you. Let's give you this. <laughs> 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 that you're empowered him with books. No, seriously. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, it, he could have just lived his life yeah. and been a kuti and enjoyed himself. Actually, like I, I think said, I think that's, what it, that's the job of that. the yeah. father. <clears throat> A father that doesn't even want his son to be greater than him isn't a good father. I mean, if he doesn't excel, then what is my job as a father? Yeah. That's why I have to give him everything, the good and bad in my brain. I have to pass it to him to empower him so he knows. And if you look at it through the way of our culture and tradition, it's the way it was done. Because now he's much younger. Yeah. I'm dying out and fading. And one day, not that soon. Where Let's is not talk about see, it. For, you see, <laughs> another topic we are very frank about is death. Is death. Yeah. Is just, one thing I don't look. I might die tonight. Yeah. If I die tonight, what are you going to do? Might they tell me? <laughs> so you must let me know. Yeah. Is, can we're running out of time, so I really just want to get through a few things. Uh, okay, finish. We'll, let's, let's not end any more news. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about death. Quick yes or no question, because your dad got asked that a lot, and he eventually got into the ring. Would you ever do politics? Yes or no? Would I ever do no. politics actively? Would you? No. Me no. Would you? Would I? It depends. So it's a, there's a possibility. There's a possibility. I, 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 I doubt it. You doubt he will? I doubt it. You might not be here then. 
I since, we are, since we are being morbid. You see, because music is... You see, it's music, music is, is, enough, is quite uh, it's powerful it's, enough. It's, it's no, not it's that tedious. powerful, it's, it's tedious. Okay. He's playing six, seven instruments. I mean, if he wants and to continue to be one of the greatest musicians, he might not have and he wants, to let, he wants to come and, mm. let's take, for instance, be president of 200 million Nigerians, yeah. cultural differences, <laughs> ethnic differences, religious differences. All right, I get you. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> let's talk, you, guys, you guys are working on something together. Yes. Yeah. I am very excited about this. Tell me about it very quickly. This is Legacy Plus, our joint album. Two separate albums. That but he be... cheated me because he didn't allow me to play his album, but he played on my own album. <laughs> I did not allow you, now. But yeah, did that's all. <laughs> he didn't call this? <laughs> on, my, <laughs> on my side of the album, I played everything myself. So it's a solo album. And I played bass and sax on my dad's album and percussion. Okay. And it's out on the 5th of February. So both albums, but they're coming out as one. Yes. yes. But it's, my, it's my, a my, really but my own, entered your own small. It was my own yeah. suggestion. Sure. Okay. That's but, amazing. But you guys do any songs together? No. Okay. No. Why not? Ah, we're very independent composers. Yeah. Yeah, it was basically his album was coming out, and mine happened to be coming out at the same time. Just and I just like, together. come. Nobody has done this before that I know of. Father and son releasing on the same day, joint album. This would be interesting. Let's do something unique. I think it's very interesting. And then he says, okay, yes. So we said to work towards this, yeah. but freedom to do his own album. And I do my own album, so, so much my own tunes, so it does the tunes, blah, blah, <laughs> then we put it together. Okay, when is this coming out? Do we have a date yet? 5th of February. 5th of February. What's so the it's called Legacy Plus. Legacy Plus. Legacy Plus. And yeah. that side of, of the album is called Stop the Hate, and mine is, mine is forward with an E in bracket. Okay. Yeah, he speaks too to much it. English. <laughs> you have to see it. It's your, yeah. it's your work that is working. <laughs> That's interesting. I'm actually looking forward to this. I think it's very, very... Yeah. Like you said, I don't know that I can remember that it's happening happened before. Yes. So 5th yeah. of February, Legacy, Legacy Plus. Plus. Yeah. Please look the, out for that. I, the great thing about it is yeah. his own is like a solo album. I mean, playing all the instruments. Yeah. He gets to Europe. He's telling everybody, I'm going to play with him. <laughs> never say, you can't do it. Because how did you find anybody play all the instruments? Yes. If you are a wind... Musician, we play wind instruments, but he's playing winds, All right. strings. Unfortunately, we need to go. But you, you can have the music out. <laughs> Monday, you have uh, Free Your Mind. Yes. Free Your Mind. You Papa are by Femi Kuti as well. Back, Thank back, you very back. much. Back, this back, 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 back. Well, they wrote Papa here, don't mind me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I feel like we needed two hours oh, to do man. this. But thanks for being so open. <laughs> thanks for joining us, guys. We'll probably try and drag them back in February when the album comes out. I'll see you next Sunday. <laughs>